What do you think about when you think about making the most of life? Or, or do you think about that at all? We're not here for long. I'm, I'm turning 67 soon, and it seems like it was about maybe three or four weeks ago that I was about 12 years old. Time goes by really quickly. So we need to think about how we're living our lives. Are we making the most of it? We're going to look at that today as we continue this look at the book of Ephesians. We're in chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 15 to 21. Someone wrote a book, maybe Francis Schaeffer, How Then Shall We Live, or something similar to that. And and that's what Paul's addressing in this letter to the church at Ephesus, where he's talking to them about how to live their lives, what God has called us to as Christians, how we should live, how we should interact with one another, and how we should interact with God, how we should pass through this life. Let's pray together and ask God to open our hearts that we might see and hear and receive what he has for us in his word today. Father, thank you for bringing us to this moment. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for your love in our lives. Thank you for your word, which is life-giving and encouraging, and it tells us the paths you would have us to walk, to trust in you with all of our heart. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have for us from your living and active holy word. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So let me read these verses, uh, reading verses 15 to 21 of chapter 5 of Ephesians. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. So Paul starts off, uh, he's got the first three verses are, are kind of general about how to live, and then the second three verses turn that into very specific commands and directives. So the first thing he tells us is we need to be careful. We need to realize that our time here is short, that if if we're in Christ, that is, if we've been born again, if we've been born from above, if we're a Christian, not a person that just attends church, not a religious person, but a born-again Christian, who is looking to and trusting in Christ for his eternal life and for his daily walk, his daily life here, then we need to be very careful how we live, not as unwise, but as wise. I think that definitely the biggest regrets in my life have to do with the times when I live not as wise, but as unwise, when I was not being careful about how I was living, when I made many poor choices and made terrible examples for those closest to me as well as others. This thing of choosing wisely is so important. We need to have a a mindset, A, that our time here is short, B, that we're not our own. If we're born again, we belong to God. And he has given us a command, and that command is that we should uh, live our lives carefully following after Christ and so set an example for others, uh, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
And a disciple is a follower, and we don't want someone to follow us down foolish paths, but down wise paths. Don't don't follow me. Only follow me as I follow Christ. And, and the same thing would be said for all of us. So he said, be very careful. Think about what you're doing. Over the last several days, I've, I've thought about purpose and how when you use something contrary to its purpose, it's evil, it's sin, it's not good. And the purpose of my life is to love and, and worship God and to serve him. That's the purpose of all of our lives who have been born again into his kingdom through faith alone in Christ alone. And so we need to live very carefully, not as foolish, not as unwise, but as wise. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, to know that God is who he says he is, and he does what he says he will do. And he's called us into that relationship. He said, therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. How do we know what the Lord's will is? We know what the Lord's will is by knowing what he has said to us. And ultimately his will, Jesus said, boiled down to, to two very simple, straightforward, but challenging commands. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul and mind. And a second is like it, essentially equal to it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And your neighbor is not just a person that lives across the street, but your neighbor is everyone, people near and people far, people you like, people you don't like, people who are similar to you and people who are completely opposite from you and me, what, wherever we may be and whoever we may be. So he said we need to understand the will of God and to, to live out the will of God is to love one another and to obey his commands, which again are simple. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. That's straightforward. It's not easy to do, but by the grace of God, as we look to Christ, we can live that life. He has given us his Holy Spirit as our guide, and God doesn't call us to something that he doesn't also equip us for. So he's equipped us for living this Christ-like life but that equipping is an ongoing daily process, and it depends on us listening to God, which is reading his word and, and praying and speaking to him and listening to him speak into our hearts. Now, God's not ever going to speak to you or to me or to anybody different than what he's already spoken in his word. He's not going to contradict himself. He's not a God of confusion. He is a God of order. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And then he says, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with his spirit. So he's contrasting two lifestyles there. One is a life where you're giving in to the flesh, and one is where you're being led by the spirit. He said, don't, don't get drunk on wine. And, and his meaning there goes beyond uh, just the consumption of alcohol. It, it's that the consumption of alcohol represents that letting down of values, that, that letting your hair down, so to speak, making different choices than you would make when you're not under the influence of something from the world. He's saying, don't be influenced by the world. Be influenced by the Holy Spirit. Don't follow your earthly nature. Follow your heavenly nature, your heavenly Father, who has called you and I if we're in Christ. And if you're not in Christ, then today should be the day of salvation, where you put your trust, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's finished the work for you. Jesus has always been and will always be. He's eternal. He is God. He became fully man, Emmanuel, God with us. He came to earth in the form of a baby. He lived a completely sinless life, which I've not done and you've not done. None of us have done. And then he took my place and your place on a cross and paid for my debts and your debts in full, stamped, 
It is finished, paid in full. And so he's calling us to, to follow after him, to live that life that he's called us to, led by the Spirit of God. Jesus told his disciples, uh, even even these 12 who had, well, 11 at that time, who had, had spent so much time with him, he said, look, don't leave Jerusalem when, when Christ was about to ascend to heaven. He said, don't leave Jerusalem. You stay here until you receive the helper, the Holy Spirit. So we need to be led by the Spirit too. To be led by the Spirit is to to not get drunk with wine, not live an earthly fashion, not live with our, our feet in the world, so to speak. Well, our, our feet are in the world, but our heart is not of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world is a better way for me to say that. And then he tells us how to, how to deal with each other. He said, speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. In other words, communicate with one another in a godly fashion, in a in an honor honorable fashion, in an orderly fashion. Speak to one another with the word of God. Speak the word of God as we talk to to one another. Uh, that's when we tell people to you know God bless you, God God watch over you and keep you. It doesn't mean that you go around saying thee and thou and thine all the time. What it does mean is that we're thinking about what we're saying. And like Ephesians, we saw in the last chapter, 429 says, don't let anything come out of your mouth except that which is good for building others up. In in other words, for helping the listener, that it'll benefit the listener. So we need to speak the things of God. We need to speak words that are loving, kind, encouraging. In another place, he said, set your minds on things above, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is excellent. If anything is praiseworthy, think on such things because what you think on is what you bring in is what's going to come back out. So we need to speak to one another like that. And then he talks about how we should speak to God. He said, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. In other words, to offer up praises. Uh, that singing may be just speaking to God. It may be, I love to speak back to God his word. Thank you, Lord, that you so loved me, that you so loved all of us, that you gave your son, that we might have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for that. That's a way of speaking back. Uh, to God or from the 23rd Psalm. Thank you, Lord, that you are my shepherd. You make me to lie down in green pastures. I shall not want. Uh, You lead me beside quiet waters. You restore my soul for your name's sake. You guide me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Thank you, Lord. So that's a way to talk to God. And then, you know, we can just talk to him. God, I need your help. I, I don't know how to deal with this situation. God, I need you to show me how to get through this difficult time. But we need to to speak to one another in a way that's helpful. We need to speak to God in a way that honors him. He is our heavenly father. So he wants to hear from us, and he wants us to be real with him. And that's, that's what he's calling us to. He said, no matter what happens, he said, always give thanks to God the Father for everything, for everything, even for the difficulties, because he has promised us that he will work those things out for our good, that he will shape us and mold us by the challenges of our life so we can give thanks in all things. We're not thankful that this difficult or bad situation happened, but we're thanking God of how he's going to work in and through this circumstance to accomplish God-sized things that are his plan. So we always give thanks to God the Father, and we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is is our, he paid for our sin. He brought us into reconciliation back uh, to God and, and broke down the barrier between us by paying for our sin 
that we don't have to go through anyone else. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And then he said, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Honor one another. Be patient with one another. Be loving to one another. Uh, don't, don't, and here he's specifically talking primarily about Christians, but we should also treat all people. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourselves. But within the body of Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Christ submitted himself to the Father. Even though he was God, he set all that aside. He emptied himself and became obedient to the Father, even to the point of death. Not just death, but death on the cross, the most vile and, and wicked form of death that existed at that time and was reserved for only the worst of criminals. And Jesus had never sinned even once, had never done anything bad, only good, only perfect in every way. So Paul is telling us here to be mindful of the time that we live in an evil world, a world controlled by the enemy. Jesus is going to control it one day. He's coming back. But at this time, the control is in the enemy. It's in Satan. He's saying, be wise as we live in these evil days and be prepared for what's going to come and live as wise and be careful and don't be foolish, but understand what God's will is. Don't be drunk with the things of this world, but be led by the Spirit speaking to one another in a in good in a good way in a godly way and speaking to God with songs of thanksgiving and praise and talking to God about the challenges in our lives and give thanks to God the Father in all things through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and submitting one to another out of reverence for Christ putting the needs of others ahead of even our own so Paul is laying out for us how to live this life, and he says it's, it's going fast. The time is short. We need to think about it right now. Don't put off to tomorrow what we must do today because we don't know tomorrow will even be there. He says in, that, in the book of James, he said, don't say you'll do this or that tomorrow. Say, if it's the Lord's will, then we will do this or that tomorrow. Amen. God bless you. God, help us, help me, help all of us to live this life that you've called us to. And may you be honored in it, and may we be drawn closer to you, living as wise and not as unwise, looking unto Jesus in all things. Amen. God bless you.